it gives us the realization it is free not just free from incarceration but free to make real music again yeah now big you up my g looking like my little cousin over there you feel me trust me <laughs> What's happening? It's your boy Peely9 and this time I am back. But not back with a reaction video, I'm back with an album slash EP slash mixtape review. It's going to be the first time I've done anything like this on my channel so I'm putting my needle drop uh, cape on. If you know who he is, he's a famous reviewer on this, on this platform. And um, yeah, I, I want to put my mindset into that kind of thing today. So if you enjoy this video, then make sure you smash your thumbs up, make sure you subscribe, and don't forget to comment down below what albums or mixtapes you'd like me to review in the future. Today, I will be reviewing and dissecting Potter Paper's latest EP. This is dro dropped on the back of him being released from prison. This is Potter Paper's first body of work since Regina v. Jamal Buzbar was released in 2018, shortly after being arrested and sentenced. If you don't know who Potter Paper is, he is one of the best lyricists in the country, rapping about his life and the activities he gets up to. One of the reasons his following has grown so strong is not just the fact that he can rap and, and make unparalleled music, but the fact that his music is authentic with genuine lyrics. This makes him so relatable and so likeable at the same time. The first track on the tape is labelled so fittingly, Never Left. It's about like a minute and a half, two minutes. Very concise and it lets us know that he's free and back after serving around three years in prison. The instrumental starts with a melody that is gradually building up and you can hear him chuckling before he drops his first bar. Guess who's back like he's never left. Suggesting that it will create a wave like he did before and you know he hasn't lost his skill or his drive This is also supported by the fact that he has a solid fan base including myself I'm a proper fanboy <laughs> and the chuckle to me reveals that he's relieved to be free and back out and he can concentrate on his music again This time without being on the run as usual throughout the mixtape as a whole Potter refers to his come up straight off the bat Talking about where he was before with no money to where he is now well at least where he's been in recent times. Potter fires off with a first main punchline. So long time shit been frying like eggy bread. You know, I've seen this quoted everywhere. I've seen him retweet it on, on Twitter and, and rightly so. What a bar. As expected, this tune is a reminder that Potter is a poet with a pen. Hitting us with heavy punchlines and gets us excited for the rest of the tape. The most quoted bar for me on the whole of the tape is... I never slept on a vial if I recollect Cut it clap for me like I work for the NHS Man, that's crazy. I, I don't want to... I don't have to break it down too much, you understand. It, it tells you how real he is. And it also keeps up with the current events with us clapping at 8 o'clock every Thursday for the NHS. This bar is relevant, the delivery is crazy, and it just hits you right in the chest. Everything a punchline should. Overall, the track does what it's supposed to do. Shows us that he's picking up right from where he left off. Real simple but hard hitting, with a kick throughout. Bars, flows, great way to start a mixtape in my opinion. The next track on this EP gets straight to the thick of the action, with the most listened to song on the album so far. The 2020 Vision Freestyle. This was the first track he released since being free and I was actually the first person on YouTube to react to this. So I'll uh, link it somewhere around here and make sure you go over and check out Potter Paper's channel. Now it's time for the details. The song starts off with a nice sound of keys and the beat is sampled with Jay-Z's classic Holy Growl. The pitch on JT's verse is heightened and this gives the freestyle real feel of the mid to late 2000s UK rap scene. Popular example being Tiny Temper Wifey Rhythm. This isn't the first time we have seen Pot of Paper do something like this with a song. City of Angels featuring Mover does the same thing with the Red Hot Chili Peppers classic. I personally think this is why it gives me a real nostalgic pot of vibe and this song in particular probably hits with most of us hardcore long running Potter fans. It gives us the realisation it's free, not just free from incarceration but free to make real music again. Potter starts the freestyle off with the bars, I know heaven's got a ghetto for the G's like us, just a clean hearted brother that let me 3-5 bus from knee high, trapping in my Levi's bruck till I got my money tool at FIFA thumb. 
crazy. Metaphors aside, God understands that Potter and others like himself have had to do certain things, get themselves out of the situation they're in. I also like the use of the Jamaican slang word bruck that's heavily used within London. It means broke. This four bar is later discovered as like a, a mini chorus as he sprays it again before his last 16 around three and a half minutes in. Throughout the track, the sample mixed with rocky guitar strings and drum patterns that stay switching up throughout make this very easy on the ears. Gives tons and tons of replay value. Like seriously, I've non-stop banged this tune since it's been released. This freestyle is extremely bar heavy, as expected from Potter. My favourites being, when you bang your gun it stays with you like days when your dad used to slap your mum. I mean, how heavy is that? Pagan say it on who? Pagan say it on me. Cause I've got that 22 inch, I kill a zombie. Never being Pompey, put a trap on C. Be man a trap like Grumpy. Another favourite of mine being six on my kicks, LVs when I lace them. Barking like Alsatian, strikers in formation. If you've seen my reaction video, you see me go absolutely buzzing for that bar. But it weren't just that, it was just a build up towards that bar. And the last one being more time I'm in the kitchen like Delia. They said P back then you was greasier. Cause back then I found gel more easier. Plenty of other hard bars throughout the freestyle, but for me, these are just the ones that stuck. The last bar especially. This gives hope to us fans that he is ready to give up the street shit. He's ready to concentrate on his music and take it to new heights. Overall, this song does not disappoint. It is another Potter classic. A highlight on the mixtape for sure, and a taster for what else is in store for 2020. Filthy Free is the next instalment on the 2020 Vision project. For me, this could possibly be the most powerful track on the EP as he really shows us where his mind is. This track as a whole is much more downbeat than the 2020 freestyle. This is via the simple drum pattern and muffled kick which is overlaid by a relaxed melody that has a real spacey vibe feel to it. He starts with a chorus which mentions Kevin and Reese. These both passed whilst he was serving. Kevin in 2014, while serving a previous conviction, and Reese, aka Slewy, in 2018, with the most recent time he served. RIP to both Kevin and Reese. The tone of Potter's voice in this one is much more relaxed and thought provoking. He really seems like he is replaying situations whilst he is in jail and questioning himself on various topics. I believe that reflecting on these situations has helped grow as a man, but also as an artist. Bars like Got me thinking about my young here eyes and eyes didn't do it but they still gave him life and tiny jumble he was wrong place wrong time when i think about their mothers brings tears to my eyes shortly followed by him feeling like he has close ones that hate him on the sly and they wouldn't care if he was dead potter is really questioning himself is it all worth it he could end up like one of the four he's previously mentioned and what for Potter then goes on to mention that he is grateful nowadays as he ain't as peak as before, suggesting he doesn't need to make the moves he has done in the past. This is also where the track takes a tiny detour. To me it feels like an angel's on one shoulder and a devil's on the other. That devil is trying to put, pull him back to the street game. He also seems angry and confused with a lot of people in the scene. He has been away and there has been a burst of gangster rappers within the UK, primarily with the explosion of drill, but I do think Potter's just targeting the scene or the UK scene in general. The bar, like. Nah, you a gangster rapper or you just rapping gangster car? If you ask me, I think all these rappers are jerseys there. They ride riding and pick like, and I sit silent. And the quotable. The real life of gangsters when they're on YouTube. Potter proceeds by telling us what we already know. You know that he's been about what he says. To me, he's making a clear point. To us the listener but also to himself. Why has he been risking his freedom when others have been glamorising and been able to gain a large audience without having to risk anything? The whole tune is an absolute vibe. Really getting into that pot of paper prison mindset. You could just imagine him writing bar after bar and really deep in his thoughts that he's having in prison. The last line of the verse or the track, Kai ain't filthy rich but I'm filthy free, tells us everything we need to know. He may not be rich, but at least he has his freedom back. Let's get on to the final track of this sick, sick mixtape. Although 2020 Freestyle is my favourite on the tape, PMW is probably the best tune, you know, in terms of an actual production. The way it's all sewn together and packaged and delivered 
as a final blow on the record, getting us all ready for future pot of paper releases. We learned that PMW stands for Pussy Money Weed straight off the rip. I really like this hook throughout the tune. He could have easily called it PMAW or PMWA, which would stand for alcohol. But the wittiness that Potter has that we've seen throughout his career so far shines through yet again, changing the choice of drink each time the hook is spat. The track as a whole is very punchline heavy, as expected, which also has a very subtle blend of looping in his real life situations without it being forced down your throat. Come home, push him weight, call it hustle memory. It's just a bar off the rip that has you screw facing every single time without doubt. I love the fact that he can be so nonchalant throughout because he knows the bars are so heavy, they will bring the energy and that will draw out the enthusiasm from the listener. I told probation I'm a rapper, now just leave me alone. Another bar that I love from this track. I may be wrong, but I feel like this is the first time that Potter has referred to himself and accepted that he is primarily a rapper. To us fans, we can see this as him leaving his past in the past. And it, it is also quite a fun bar because, you know, the probation officers know what he's been about. And him just going, well, I'm a rapper now. I just enjoy it. He then goes on to say he is about to drop a mixtape he don't need to promote. I assumed initially that this was about the record we're listening to. These bars would have been pre-recorded and written before deciding to add this to this EP. And he also literally dropped this EP six hours after he released his 2020 freestyle music video on the YouTube channel. This line is then preceded by, but fuck it, training day, training day, that's three in a row. I see this bar in a couple of ways. One, to me, it shows how clever he is, as the bar can be applied to the bar before, and it can be applied to the current tape, but it also teases us for training day three. Training day one and two are absolute classics from Potter, and the release of training day three being imminent is bound to get us listeners excited. Potter continues to coast through the track, letting us know what kind of work he has been putting in. To be honest, it's such a great track you can just vibe and it feels like bars are digesting with no real effort. Once again, we reach another bar that confirms Potter Paper's mentality. I can't lie to you, crime pays in a lot of ways. You gotta catch a bird for you to know that it's not a game. Again, just like Filthy Free, this is the devil on one of the shoulders pulling Potter's mindset. He tells us that crime pays and then it's like the angels on the other shoulder letting him know that yeah, but you faced the consequences and you didn't like them. I haven't touched on many quotables during PMW because the whole track is quotable. In fact, the whole tape is. And to be honest, I didn't want to be sitting here for 15 minutes force feeding you metaphors and bars that you may or may not have got. Most of the time having fun in listening to a bar heavy song is that on the third or fourth listen, you hear a bar that finally clicks. Having that moment's a pretty special connection between the listener and the artist. That being said, the third verse included even more heavy hitting lyrics, which you should listen to and digest for yourself. Capped off by the quote, RIP another Instagram caption. Crazy bar, straight to the point and hits hard. Potter once again showing us he's the realist. Shortly following this, Potter drops a flow that really reminded me of Mover. This is unsurprising because we all know how close paper and money is. The bar starts with, when I'm with Shorty, pretty bad, ride me like Arlie, she get wet wet like a swimming pool party. The flow continues for another two, four bars. Potter concludes the track by gluing the first PMW hook with the second PMW hook, which is really clever. Although it's so simple, it just gels the track as a whole and concludes another banger on the tape. Overall, in my opinion, this tape was fire. Of course, it was only four tracks long, but we have to take it for what it is. For only four tracks, it was still diverse enough for it not to be boring or just sound like one long Queen mashup kind of track but it was also not too far from each other for the tracks and the EP to make sense as a whole. The tape made sense. It was a welcome home present from Potter to his fans. He gave us jail bars and let us know the different mindsets he has been through without directly saying too much where his mind has been. I also feel like he didn't want to just give us everything. This was a taster and a taster for what's to come. I can't wait for training day three and I can't wait for the collabs he said he is now open for in his GRM daily interview. I can't wait for the future for Potter Paper, so watch this space. That is the end of my review, I hope you enjoyed it. If you would like to see more stuff like this, then let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to smash a big thumbs up and if you're new around here or you enjoyed this content then do not forget to subscribe. Check out my other videos on my channel, I've got freestyles, I've got reactions, I've got a Q&A and until next time, lights out, camera off, peace.